This video is on uh, magnetic compass deviation. So it will explain the concept of compass deviation and uh, how it occurs and how this is applied uh, in the context of a ship's magnetic compass and navigation. All right, so we'll start with uh, something called magnetic variation. So before I start with magnetic variation, I'll explain a little bit more about compass deviation. So a ship has a magnetic compass, which is like a backup the main compass for navigation purpose is a gyro compass. So the gyro compass is the one that is connected to the autopilot for steering purposes. Now, now if the gyro compass fails for any reason, uh, the ship has to use the magnetic compass for navigation. All right, so this magnetic compass has to be corrected for by a qualified compass adjuster so that it can be used for navigation. Now in a perfect world, the ship's magnetic compass uh, would be the same as magnetic compass. Now, why we use these two phrases is because uh, although it is a magnetic compass, the magnetic compass when installed on a ship which is made of iron and is carrying cargo mostly, it could be containers or iron ore, uh, it gets influenced by due to the ship's own magnetism. Or so even structural changes on the ship or the cargo, or the, uh, the fact that the ship itself is made of iron has influence on a magnetic compass. So the magnetic compass then no longer remains a magnetic compass, it becomes a ship's magnetic compass. So the ship's magnetic compass gets influenced by its own magnetism. So otherwise a normal magnetic compass will be influenced only by the Earth's magnetism. So once corrected for, it should be alright in a, in a particular place. But because a ship also gets additionally influenced by its own magnetism uh, that is called a ship's magnetic compass and that's the deviation all right that is deviation so before i go into variation i want to explain what is deviation deviation is uh, a magnetic compass which gets influenced by its by the ship's own magnetism now in contrast the variation uh, is shown on a nautical chart now a variation uh, as you can see, every nautical chart will have a compass rose and in the compass rose, you can see the variation mentioned. So in this case, you can see the variation is uh, 6 degrees and 40 minutes. Just you see the arrow, next to the arrow is 6 degrees and 40 minutes west and it says 1992. So that was the variation calculated in 1992 and then from 1992 onwards, you apply a correction of 8 minutes east. So let's assume that in 2019, it will be 27 years from 1992 so 27 times 8 minutes uh, is the correction that you will be applying to this variation so if i if i if i want to explain to you so 27 times 8 is about 216 216 means uh, 3 minutes and 36 seconds so the correction of 3 minutes and 36 seconds when 36 sorry 3 degrees and 36 minutes 3 degrees and 36 minutes it's 216 minutes and 3 degrees and 36 minutes so when it's east you subtract it so you will subtract 3 minutes 3 degrees and 36 minutes from 6 degrees and 40 minutes west so that your resultant uh, variation becomes 3 degrees and 4 minutes west so that's variation now what is this variation the variation as shown on the nautical chart refers to the earth's magnetism in that particular place in that particular area so when the ship is transiting through that area along with its own magnetism which is deviation it is also getting influenced by the earth's magnetism that is basically variation and that varies all right so that varies with heading that varies with geographical positions uh, as well all right uh, sorry that varies with geographical position not with heading so the ship's magnetism varies with heading but the variation varies with the geographical positions all right so on a normal compass, the compass needle is deflected by the ship's own magnetism as you can see here and that is called magnetic deviation. Alright, so of course it changes with heading as you can see here. So the deviation then becomes the angle between the magnetic compass or magnetic meridian and the true direction of the compass needle. So the compass needle is the one that gets influenced by the ship's own magnetism. So otherwise the 
compass would be pointing towards the true magnetic north but because it gets influenced by the ship's own uh, magnetism it starts pointing towards the compass north right? so not the true magnetic north but a compass north so that's why deviation becomes the angle between magnetic magnetic meridian and the true direction of the compass needle so just to get familiar with the terms and terminologies the red arrow here is pointing towards the true north denoted by tn the yellow arrow is pointing towards the magnetic north denoted by mn and the angle between the true north and the magnetic north is called variation now what is true north true north is a fictional north that we uh, assume that 0 0 0 degrees is the true north so why we use true north is because uh, true north gives us a reference point for practical navigation the reason is that the magnetic north doesn't remain in one position with the changing of the earth's magnetism every day the earth's core uh, changes are taking place in the earth's core and the earth's magnetism keeps changing because of which the magnetic north keeps changing position so because it is not a constant position we cannot use it as a reference point or a 0, 0, 0 point for navigation purposes for course calculation that's why we needed a fictional north which remains in one direction and that becomes a reference point for us to measure courses and that is the true north so the angle between the true north and the magnetic north then becomes the variation then we have something called the compass north denoted by cn now like i said before if you are getting confused the compass north is actually because the ship's magnetic needle the ship's magnetic the the, the needle on the ship's magnetic compass gets influenced by its own magnetism along with the earth's magnetism it points towards a new north called the compass north and the angle between the compass north and the magnetic north is called deviation hence the angle between the true north and the compass north which is the combination of variation and deviation is then called compass north. Alright, so I hope these terms were clear to you. If not, then watch, uh, just go back and watch this video again. Otherwise, just ask me in the comment section. You can have questions for me and I'm happy for you to, uh, happy to explain it again. Alright, like I said before, compass error changes with a change in the heading. The reason is because the deviation starts to change with a change in the heading. Alright. So the purpose of correcting the compass is to minimize the effects of deviation. That's because uh, the ship's magnetic magnetism uh, keeps changing so the soft iron component or the temporary magnetism keeps changing and that's why you have to correct the compass to minimize the effects of deviation the permanent magnetism which uh, which is installed in a ship at the time of construction it remains pretty much the same but with the changing cargo content or if you make any structural changes or uh, or what else can be the reason uh, that a ship's temporary magnetism keeps changing and that is deviation so the permanent magnetism which occurs during the construction of the ship is corrected for by using the permanent magnets which are the fore and aft magnets and the athwart ship magnets and the vertical correctors which are called healing error magnets. Now if you are not sure what these are please watch my video on parts of the magnetic compass. I will provide you with a link of that video with this video as well so you can watch that video and, and know what, uh, what I am talking about. So magnetic compass has all these correctors in it and a qualified compass adjuster then puts or uses these magnets to adjust for the ship's deviation and you also have temporary man magnets or soft iron magnets this corrects for the temporary of the or the soft iron magnetism of the ship and these are called flinders bars and kelvin spheres again you may see the video on the parts of the compass to know where they are kept and how they can be used to correct for the ship's magnetism like I said before, correcting the compass is the job of a qualified compass adjuster. It is not the job of a master. But it is advisable for a ship's officer, to maybe if you are ashore and if you have some time, to do this course because it gives you a lot of knowledge about how to correct the magnetic compass. It's, it's a good skill to have, a very rare skill to have. Not everybody has it. So go for it if you want to. There are compass courses, uh, compass adjusters courses available in different countries. Um, and you should do that course and get a qualified uh, qualification uh, and then you can adjust it otherwise you have to call somebody from shore and they'll come and on board and adjust the compass for you at the end of the day the qualified compass adjuster's job is to correct the compass for its own deviation and the sum total of all deviations on different headings should be less than one degree the deviation card has to be prepared and issued 
Now, what is the deviation card? I'll show you what a deviation card is and what it looks like. However, the master of the ship must ensure that for each magnetic compass, the tables or curve of residual deviations from the last adjustment and the details of subsequent changes in deviations are available for use at all times. This is a legal requirement. All right, a penal provision means a legal requirement by Solas. Now, what this means is basically, uh, this is a deviation card that I was talking about. So, deviation card is required to be placed next to the autopilot. It has to be displayed next to the autopilot. All right, it is a requirement. So, if the port state control, the flag state control come on board your ship, they will check for the deviation card. Now, this deviation card can be made when the compass adjuster comes on board and he and he swings the magnetic compass without swinging the ship. So the compass adjuster will come on board most likely in port unless he comes on or he or she comes in encourage and swings the ship around. But otherwise they swing the magnetic compass and uh, note down the deviation readings. But if a subsequent time has passed or if subsequent or large alterations in the ship structures have been made or uh, some other reason maybe the ship went to dry dock because of which you think that the ship's magnetism has got influenced then the ship staff can also swing the ship around which means swinging the compass and obtain the deviation on different headings of the ship i'll show you how it's done through animation after a couple of slides here and the reason is that the deviation card should always be updated the reason being that although the ship uses the gyro compass as the main compass the magnetic compass is a backup compass so if the gyro compass fails you have to steer the ship using the magnetic compass and at that point of time you have to apply the deviation and you have to convert the magnetic course into the true course by applying the variation in deviation so that the ship steers the right course uh, when sailing towards the port so all the courses drawn on the ship's chart are true courses but this one the magnetic compass shows you a magnetic course the magnetic course has to be converted to true course for the ship to be able to be steered and that's why you are required to have a deviation card handy next to the autopilot so that if the gyro compass fails you can steer the correct magnetic course uh, to get a resultant correct true course now these deviations are provided for different headings and a ship's officer may able to uh, construct one by swinging the ship around these deviation cards are normally made for every two years they are valid for every two years unless the ship has gone through major structural changes dry dock or uh, some other reason because of which uh, the deviation or the magnetism of the ship may have been largely changed all right and when making a deviation card make sure you provide the uh, other information that is the position in which the ship was swung and the cargo content and the weather that you experienced at that point of time all those things which could influence the ship's magnetism at that point of time all right so the deviation book in which you note down all the uh, you note down the compass errors and basically you know done the deviation for different headings is a statutory requirement by law you must check errors once in each watch or for each course tier whichever is more frequent the, it's compulsory for all vessels over 100 gross tonnage and details of magnetic compass characters should also be recorded in the deviation book the vessel must be swung to find the compass deviation now compass error is a requirement to be taken in each watch by the officer on watch bridge officer on watch if you are unable to take the compass error you must mention in the logbook why you were not able to take the compass error it could be because of cloudy skies or some other reason or maybe you were busy or maybe it was uh, uh, traffic heavy traffic areas but you must mention the reason why you did not obtain the compass error. the reason is that if you obtain the compass error in every watch the master can then make a comparison or the ship's comp uh, compass adjuster can make a comparison or uh, the post shirt officer can come and compare the deviation card and the accuracy of the deviation card along with the uh, uh, deviations noted in the deviation book. All right, comparison reason can be made, assist in estimating position of the characters, uh, dictates that entries are required, remarks column should contain useful information such as vessel was rolling, whether it was good steady bearing or observation was obscured by haze on other, other uh, obstructions to visibility. Swinging the compass must be done by a licensed compass adjuster and must be carried out if deviations are greater than 5 degree on any heading. After a long period of layup, maybe in dry docks or uh, shipyards and if major structural changes have been made such as tank changes or tanks added or accommodation uh, alterations or anything like that. After dry dock, if large changes in deviation are noted, even then the ship's compass must be swung. So although it has to be done by a licensed compass adjuster, uh, 
on the ship the compass deviation card may be updated by the ship staff as well and then of course in the next port whenever possible you should call the compass register and get it verified by a compass register as well so how do you swing a compass normally what we do is we find a transit bearing of a land of a fixed object so on land it could be um, structures which are in transit so or we use a fixed object the bearing of which is known the true bearing of which is known from the chart and then we bring the ship along and i'll show you and we swing the bearing, uh, ship in such a way that on different headings you note down the bearing of the fixed object and then you compare the bearings the man and so you note down the magnetic bearings of the ship's object and you compare it with the true bearings obtained from the gyro compass so the true bearings is obtained from the gyro compass for the same heading and the magnetic bearings are obtained from the magnetic compass so normally two people are taking bearings uh, at the same time and uh, it is done for different headings so normally headings of 10 degrees or 15 degrees are used so because ship can be swung from 000 to 360 or courses courses from 000 to 360 so we start with 000 10 degrees 20 30 40 so on till 360 and uh, that is how a ship is swung so for every 10 degrees of reading or 15 degrees of reading depends on your master uh, the ship is uh, kept steady on that course and then one officer takes gyro bearings or true bearings on one officer takes magnetic compass bearings and then those compass bearings are, are there those bearings are compared to obtain the deviation or different headings so you see the ship is coming and you know this transit bearings is a good idea but if it's not possible to get transit bearings then you can use a fixed object of which a bearing is known from the chart so just this is just showing you how the ship is swung in different directions north west south east so basically on different headings and what i was telling you every heading the ship is made steady for some time and just for a few seconds and it, it has to be done very quickly because otherwise the geographic position of the ship also changes so it has to be done very quickly so that you can uh, quickly note down the bearing so two officers keep noting the bearing one uh, one officer is inside the bridge and uh, you can use a cadet or somebody to note down the readings so basically a turning circle should be very small turning circle should not be very big all right so when you swing the compass around the ship's turning circle should not be very big. So the bigger the turning circle, the greater the errors that start to creep in. So you can see here, I'm just showing you an example here. So the ship was about 12 miles away from the object or the fixed object, but the turning circle was less than uh, two miles of radius. All right, so then the error is less than one degree. All right, so I hope this was useful to you. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to write in the comment section. Otherwise.